NSA whistleblowers have been telling us for a long time that the NSA was violating the law and surveilling the public. Nobody paid attention to them, nobody paid attention to us. But when the Ed Snowden documents came out, suddenly it was all believable. Yet we've only seen 1% of those documents being released. We've seen that Glenn Greenwald has taken 100% control of those documents. And we see that new media corporations are being made out of the stash of documents. Major book deals, major movies are in the works about this. And so the question is, are we being controlled? Is there a limited hangout going on here with this 1% and the 99% being held behind? Cybelle Edmonds of BoilingFrogsPost.com is joining us today. She has a lot of questions. Well, Cybelle, thank you for joining us. Now, one of the things that concerns us from looking at this is the fact that only 1% of these documents have been released. And that's something that we, we've seen the government manage information before. We've seen them manage the public through information. And that's one of the things that really concerns me. But you've got some deeper concerns about conflicts of interest between uh, Glenn Greenwald profiting off of this and his connections with Amidiar and PayPal. Tell us what your concerns are. Well, um, since this case broke last summer, uh, I have been watching it very, very closely. It is extremely important not only for everyone, people as you know, citizens whose privacy is being totally violated and the criminal illegal deeds by the government, but also, uh, I'm concerned as a whistleblower and as a as a person who has a whistleblower organization, and how this fits within the general guidelines of uh, whistleblowing with integrity, which is extremely important. Uh, during the last uh, 12 years, I have been emphasizing over and over that it's very important when whistleblowing is done, it's done with integrity. Mm -hmm. And not to let any whistleblowing being hijacked by either partisanship or corporate interest or government interest, because as we know, uh, especially with all the attention that uh, in the last 10 years, at least since 9-11, whistleblowers have been receiving, this is something that government and the establishment actually would want to utilize to miss uh, to put out misinformation yes. and uh, and we know that government absolutely is capable of doing it and when government wants to do such things well they do have the corroboration and the collaboration of the mainstream media and of course the corporations well in this case in Snowden's case I was very concerned when uh, first the case broke with Glenn Greenwald uh, being the person who Snowden trusted with these documents for several several reasons that dates back all the way till 2004 2005 with Greenwald but I decided to just sit back and watch and see how everything unfolds and what I'm seeing today these things the the facts what has been happening they are very very troublesome and uh, unfortunately people, at least the majority, they don't realize that when they are given this consistent picture of uh, uh, the, the state of affair by the mainstream media, which has been the case with Snowden case, I mean, you're looking at New York Times and CNN and Fox and Guardian, basically all the mainstream establishment news, they have been very consistent in giving exactly the same picture. That alone begs the uh, uh, further scrutiny and examination. Yeah, so as you were talking about before with whistleblowers, it's important to remember that we've been talking about this for quite some time. Whistleblowers have been talking about it. Alex Jones has been talking about it. We've seen the persecution of people like Drake and Benny and others who were giving this same information. And as you point out, nobody was listening to them at all. And yet when the Snowden leaks come along, everybody, it's, it's gospel truth, everybody's paying attention now. That's a good thing. My concern is, and it really kind of goes to the name of your, your uh, organization, of Boiling, po uh, Boiling Frogs Post, it is like boiling frogs. They are doing this gradually in a very limited way. When we see that in all of this time, only 1% has gone out. Now, of course, he could make the argument that uh, it has more effect if he doesn't just do a complete dump. But only 1% in this amount of time? I mean, we're going to stretch this out over decades, these leaks? And, and at what point does the public stop paying attention to any of the information that's coming out of the Snowden documents? 
I think you made all the great points. First of all, let me address your point one, which is very important. You talked about how the real whistleblowers have been ignored. We have had Russell Tice, who spent over a decade with the NSA, coming out publicly and talking about how the NSA is collecting information from the judges and Congress and blackmailing them. We got zero, zero uh, media attention on this case from a well-known whistleblower who had received medals from the Air Force and has mm -hmm. received awards from the NSA. So that's an excellent point. The second point that you make also is extremely important, and that's the fact that only 1% of these documents have been released. The argument that we are being given by people like Greenwald is that, oh, this is much more effective. However, as they are saying and providing the public with this line, which is a baloney line, the same Greenwald is making multi-million dollar book deals with mainstream publishers who would never, ever publish yes. anything that is against establishments with documents that they consider to be stolen and highly classified. Yes. And promise, this person, Greenwald, promises the publishers that he's going to withhold some information, some of these documents, which are not his, these are the ones that belong to the government, the United States people, to Snowden who obtained this. So he has the secondhand documents. I will reserve some of these documents and I will publish this for you. So you got to give me more million dollars rather than those guys in Guardian. Because it just came out that uh, the same thing, journalists in Guardian now, they're trying to go and shop for books minus the documents. Therefore, <laughs> uh, Glenn Greenwald got all the millions of dollars on that. Secondly, he goes, and this is the man who has spent a decade attacking mainstream media, justifiably, very nicely. I, I, I always agreed with him, his mm -hmm. points on corporate mainstream media. I mean, he goes and makes a deal with the worst of the worst of the worst of the corporate media, the one that is actually owned by one mega corporationist who owns eBay and PayPal and who has a track record that goes miles long on how he has been and his corporations against anti-whistleblowers. Whistleblowers with Manning case, PayPal froze their accounts. With uh, WikiLeaks case, PayPal froze their accounts. Not only that, the owners, this is Omid Yar and his partners, they have been very outspoken about the danger of whistleblowers and that they are pro-government, specifically pro-NSA, and that they absolutely see it justified that hackers and whistleblowers, those people who obtain documents and leak it, should be jailed, should be prosecuted. So he goes, he being uh, Glenn Greenwald, and makes this $250 million business deal with this corporationist. And mm -hmm. this is the same man who spent 10 years attacking all the other mainstream media, always tagging them as corporate media. So you're looking at a, someone who is absolutely written by hypocrisy, somebody who has been absolutely driven by money, dollars. Yes. Uh, his book, okay, Glenn Greenwald's book is going to come out in June, uh, less, no, actually it's going to come out in March, April this coming year. This means he made this deal with the publishers as soon as the case broke. Oh, as that's soon interesting. As these documents hang, were hang on, Sibel. Hang on, Sibel. Yes. We're out of time for this segment. We're going to end the program and we'll be right back with this interview. Well, that's the end of our show tonight, but stick around. If you're a Prison Planet TV subscriber, we'll have the continuation of that interview with Sibel Edmonds of BoilingFrogsPost.com. Stay tuned. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Well, when PayPal's owner, Pierre Amidiar, announced the new venture with Glenn Greenwald that he was going to fund with $250 million, the mainstream media fell all over itself, describing him as an altruistic philanthropist billionaire. But what's really motivating this merger between them and this new venture? We've been talking to Sibel Edmonds of BoilingFrogsPost.com. Well, Sibel, just as we were going to the break, you were talking about PayPal and the troubling connections with Amidiar. And actually, there's also Palantir, which 
The other founders of PayPal were involved in it, and Palantir was the one that was, not only were they shutting down funding to WikiLeaks and the Manning defense, but they were also conspiring to go after WikiLeaks using Palantir, and also even Gr Glenn Greenwald at the time. Uh, absolutely. Yes. And as I said, it sums up basically the type of person we are looking at here, and that's a person who is ridden by hypocrisy. I hated corporate media, but when the money comes to me and I'm being bought out, I am pro-corporate media. He's saying this is totally justified. There is nothing wrong that he's going to save most of these documents and give it to, and actually the ownership of it, to Pierre Omidyar of PayPal, and then they together are going to decide what they're going to publish or not. For money. Same thing with the book deal. For money. And, and pair it up with hypocrisy and money. Well, these are the incentives, these are the motivations that taint any whistleblowing, not in this case, in any case. And this is why we have also asked Snowden to actually come out and answer these questions from me, from other whistleblowers, from, from the public, and making his position clear. Does he see it justified that these documents are being sold or withheld and or withheld for money? And the other extremely important point you made, and I really would like to talk about this, you refer to the parallels with the analogy boiling frogs. Uh, I have been talking with a lot of uh, former government whistleblowers, uh, people who have retired from the community, about what would be the motivations, since we see the mainstream media, mainstream publisher, Hollywood, even the government, yes. okay, uh, being really pro this when you're looking at the whole theme altogether. And that is a very important point because... When you look at these pictures that they are given to us, we need to turn it upside down, inside out, and look at it from every angle. What if the United States government wants the people to know for sure that they are being watched at all times? Yes. And that includes people in Congress, people mm -hmm. in court, yes. and also internationally. Mm -hmm. And you see, the U.S. government can't come out and say, we are doing this. So what better way than having this whole mm -hmm. scenario set up and, and i'm thinking saying hypothetically so that let's get over with it the whole yes. world including the united states the public know this is what we are doing you can't stop it you can't touch us and therefore you better watch out and mm -hmm. one of the good analogy for this would be this whole model of panopticon yes. when people know that at all time they are being watched by these unseen eyes when you have that concept totally placed and ingrained within the people's psyche, that's when you're at the last stage of the police state, and that's mm -hmm. exactly where we are getting at. So my question to all these people within these uh, organizations like NSA who left, who blew the whistle was, do you see this as a possibility? And they see that, yes, absolutely this can be the possibility, especially if we see that nothing really happens. Yeah, they're yes. talking about tweaking some FISA laws. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have heard some barking from Congress. We have been hearing barking from Congress for so long. <laughs> they come out, they bark, they don't bite. Same thing with the international leaders. Well, you know, sure, see, though, like I, I think it's interesting, as you pointed out before, you had this total 180. Uh, we had whistleblowers that for a decade were telling us what was happening with Drake and Benny and others. And as you pointed out, nobody paid any attention to it. And now there's been this dramatic turnaround where not only is all the mainstream media taking this as gospel truth when they totally ignored everything from all the internal whistleblowers, everything was ignored. Now it's all gospel truth. It's now movie deals, book deals, all with stolen documents that supposedly affect our national security. If you believe the NSA spokesman, I guess one thing that I've seen from people pushing back on this idea, and I, I agree with you, I do think that it is actually in your face, uh, panopticon rollout. But one of the things that people have pushed back on this is like, look, this has been pretty embarrassing for the NSA. We've caught James Clapper and others uh, committing perjury before the Senate, and yet nothing has happened to them, has it? And one of the things that occurs to me is that perhaps this is maybe what they hung out some of these guys. Uh, uh, in, a, in an agency where there was another agency that wanted to essentially get their, their power. You know, you got this bureaucratic infighting because there's a lot of overlap in terms of responsibility between the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, Homeland Security. They've got all these different turf wars that are going on internally. So they could have hung out some of this data to let, let some of these guys hang out to dry. But the big story is that, of course, nothing has happened to James Clapper or any of these guys. 
No, <clears throat> and you just refer to this term shame. I mean, really, since when the government has had any shame or embarrassment? <laughs> That's right. I mean, to, to even That's get right. into that would be really a far stretch, the fact that there are people <laughs> who actually have enough integrity to be ashamed and to be embarrassed, really. I, I, I would seriously doubt mm -hmm. any notion of shame or embarrassment when it comes to the high-level bureaucratic people within our government and the administration and our elected officials. They are beyond shame. They are beyond embarrassment. They say and, they've and been embarrassed by these leaks, and yet not embarrassed enough to change anything. They simply push back and say, oh, you know, these people ought to go to jail. We're going to do it. It's for your own good. And we see people that are involved with PayPal, like Max Levkin, saying that he loves the NSA. He loves this trade-off of, as he puts it, liberty for, uh, or rather privacy for security. But of course, you don't get any security if you, if you lose your privacy, and you don't have any liberty if you lose your privacy either. Absolutely, and Greenwald has established partnership with these people, mm -hmm. with these exact same people. Mm -hmm. Basically, he said, I had a price. You buy me, and I will be pro you. I was, be you know, before anti you because you were not paying me. And uh, I want to also talk about something uh, that is very, very important, and that is the government's uh, duality or duplicity in this whole case beyond that. And that is, on one hand, we have this government that says, the properties, these were government properties, they were highly classified, they were stolen. Yet, the same government says, it's okay, any reporters, in this case Greenwald, who has these documents, to go and throw the globe and travel with it in, inside his laptop, to go sell it to mainstream publishers, to go and sell it to Pierre Omidyar, PayPal's uh, tycoon, mm -hmm. to go and sell it to the Hollywood studios. They are saying they are, they are perfectly fine with it. This, we've never had a case like this in the history of this country. I know Greenwald is very good as someone who was an ambulance chaser attorney, who muddies the water and puts all sorts of uh, modifying elements to argue and say, no, that's not the case. Government is chasing me. I spoke with another expert with law enforcement. I said, how could it be that you have this guy's husband, Greenwald's husband, uh, what's his name, Miranda, Having, and this is three months, two and a half, three months after the story broke, supposedly our government was supposed to drone Snowden and Greenwald, yet this man's boyfriend, husband, is going from Germany to London and he's carrying laptop with 50,000 document files in it. They are telling me even people within borderline IQ level, you know, forget about intelligence, forget about uh, average intelligence, forget about even, you know, borderlines, they would not do such a ridiculous thing. Mm -hmm. What is this assurance that says, we have these documents and we are just going on the plane and we are traveling all around the world with suitcases and the, and the laptops filled with documents. That itself raises so many flags. And again, we do not get answers for, for, uh, for these inconsistencies, conflict of interest, and all these questions that says, this is not what they may want us to believe it is. However, most people, they have this messiah complex. They want to believe because as a society, we want to believe in someone, some entity. We did that with Obama. Didn't people say That's change? Right. Eight years, seven years, six years later, you're going to see a large segment still saying it was not his fault. They made him do it. Uh, he was the messiah. He wanted to bring the change. They would not even admit to the reality. We are seeing similar psychology. We are seeing similar types of reaction and the similar kind of unfortunate consistency with Glenn Greenwald case here. Well, a lot of people were, had concerns and were suspicious about how somebody at Snowden's level could get access to these documents. So they were concerned that either he was in on it or he was being played on it. But whether or not that's true, I guess the thing that really concerns me and still concerns me is that only 1% of these documents have come out. We know that they're being managed. We know that they're exclusively held by Glenn Greenwald. So Snowden is essentially out of this. He's turned all this over to him. And we know from the appearance of The Guardian's editor before Parliament that they have met with British and U.S. intelligence a hundred times talking about what they can and cannot release on this. But I think the final piece of the puzzle that really makes me concerned about this, well, I won't say the final piece because it's also his deals with Amidiar and PayPal and their involvement with the NSA and Palantir and CIA venture capital corporations that have been set up. But I guess this other thing that's coming out here that we're just now starting to get a glimpse of is this, as you point out, full spectrum media push, where it's not just that all the mainstream media has bought into this totally 
into the narrative that's being put out by Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald without any question, but they've also bought into the book deals, the movie deals. We've got multiple Hollywood studios looking at making movies out of his book. We've even got the Broccoli family, which did the James Bond series, looking at this. So this is really kind of a, an entire mythos that's being created around this as you talk about the hero standing up. It is, and this is why I have brought this major concern that I have out in the public about the detrimental effect this can have on all whistleblowers from yes. the past, present, and future. All it takes is one bad apple, and I'm not saying yet, in, you know, in this case, I'm not saying he is. I haven't decided yet on mm -hmm. Snowden, mm -hmm. but if this goes down the history and, and people see that this was for profit, this was pure acting, these were done not under good intentions, but under some really questionable, tainted intention. This would be the end of whistleblowing in terms of whistleblower statute in the public's eyes. Because whistleblowers, government whistleblowers especially, they suffer so much uh, under the stigmatizing psychology of they are, they are traitors and they are disgruntled. Now, this, after Manning and after Drake, people are getting to respect these individuals. So some of that paradigm was actually shifting. Now, if we enter a case where this particular case proves to be a lie, bad intention, profiteering, and all these elements that we just discussed, that is going to damage whistleblowers far more than anything else that the government uh, could have done to them in terms of jailing them in the case of Manning or uh, prosecute them in the, again like in the case of Thomas Drake. This would destroy, destroy the reputation of whistleblowers and this is one of my main concern as the national director of uh, NSWBC, National Security Whistleblowers Coalition, and that is what this could cost all whistleblowers. We have never had any whistleblower like this, where you're looking at this type of uh, partnership with the tainted government and corporates, corporations and uh, profiting from whistleblowing with millions of dollars. I even asked the question, is Glenn Greenwald giving any cuts back to Snowden? Yes. And he hasn't answered neither Greenwald nor Snowden. Well, the public has the right to know. He well, gets $3 million. A... Is he giving him a million dollar of this? We don't know. And mm -hmm. what if he gives him a million dollar for this? What does it say about what is this in terms of if the media is portraying it as legit real whistleblowing? You had an interesting open letter, an article that you had on the 15th on your website, boilingfrogspost.com. And you asked several questions to Mr. Snowden, and you said, did you authorize Mr. Greenwald to withhold 99% of the documents and transfer ownership to the corporate news entity owned by PayPal's Pierre Omidyar? These are some interesting questions. This is exactly what you were just saying here. Did you vet the documents? If you did, then why did you turn them over to Glenn Greenwald? If you didn't vet the documents, why are you letting him do all this? Did you make any demands to ensure that you were going to have any feedback in the process? These are important questions that I think a lot of us have about Ed Snowden's involvement in it as we see how this is being turned over to PayPal, which is totally in bed, as, as, as William Benny pointed out. Financial institutions are very much in bed with the government because the government depends on these financial institutions to help them collect their taxes. So, of course, the financial institutions are going to be looking at people all over the world. And we don't see anything in that, in the 1% of the documents that have been released from the Snowden cash. We don't see anything about any financial institutions, especially about PayPal. And we know that PayPal is very much embedded with the intelligence community. Yes, Greenwald uh, admitted it. He said, yes, of course they are partners. Mm -hmm. Of course they are cooperating with the NSA and they have been cooperating. But the same Greenwald is saying, you know what? He's saying Snowden gave me the entire authority. He said, you can do as you wish. So if I make a book deal, and he's saying that this is all completely sanctioned and authorized by him. He gave it to me and he didn't put any condition. He said, do as you wish. That's what he's been telling the public. I, I don't think any legit whistleblowers would ever, ever do that. Take a look at the history. We've never seen whistleblowers doing that. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, this is highly questionable. And if, if I were in his shoes right now, I would be screaming loud. I would be out there saying this is wrong. I collected this information for one purpose only, to raise public awareness for the public's right to know, because I believe these were incriminating in our government's illegal activities. Now, he can't say that. 
This information so far has brought millions of dollars, $250 million corporate venture ship with Glenn Greenwald, books and Hollywood deals. 99% of it so far has been censured. And if what Greenwald says is correct, and that is Snowden is perfectly fine with it, then I have to say publicly here on this show for the first time, if this is correct, if, if Snowden is okay with this, with what Greenwald has been doing, then no, sir, he is not a whistleblower. I would never define him as a whistleblower. I would question his motives. And I would be one of the first people in the United States of America asking for accountability of what he has done. If absolutely. what Greenwald says is accurate. I'm absolutely repulsed by everything that I've learned uh, about Pierre Midiar in about the last month. Even this microfinancing that's going on in India and the suicides involved around that. I mean, that's just, the guy is a predator. He's just a billionaire predator. Just is the typical globalist bankster. You know, he's, he's uh, well, he didn't go to Bilderberg, but of course, Peter Thiel and Alex Karp, who did uh, Palantir, they were there along with Jeff Bezos, you know, and I, I see this whole thing as being a, another Silicon Valley billionaire trying to get into the game of media so that he's got some kind of a leverage. So that's one of the things I didn't mention in this. I think he's going to be possibly using some of these documents. If they're authentic, he's, he sees that he could use them against people in Washington, right? Of course. <laughs> I mean, blackmail information is money. Yeah. What is $250 million for billions to be gained? Yeah. But maybe this is a new paradigm we are seeing because George Soros has been doing it for a few years. The so-called alter alternative media that he has bought out, he is basically funding completely, including democracy now. But then we saw it with Amazon Corporation. Now we are seeing with PayPal Corporation, this is maybe the new media that they have in mind. Yes. Let's have a media by corporate, for the corporate, by the corporate, and let's do it directly. Let's just bypass this third party thing in the middle of New York Times. We're going to do it ourselves. So yes. I don't know who's going to come next. Yes. But yes. Uh, this is scary, really yeah. scary. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Omidyar is going to be blackmailing the blackmailers. <laughs> I think that's what he's going to do. That, that's my bet. That's yeah. how I see it. Because yeah. that's the kind of a person he is. And, mm -hmm. and, and yes, this is going to be a very lucrative business, business for him. Yeah. I'm very concerned myself about the way that these documents are being managed. If they're authentic, and many of them appear to be, the whole thing seems like a limited hangout. And that's the thing that I'm very, very concerned about. Thank you for pointing this out. Thank you for going in depth about this. You've got some very interesting questions that I hope Ed Snowden replies to because these are very relevant questions that you've got in this open article, this open letter to Ed Snowden. And I hope we hear back from that. We're going to be following up on this. Thank you so much, Cybelle Edmonds, BoilingFrogsPost.com. Thank you. Well, we're going to continue on this story. It'll be interesting to see if Ed Snowden will answer these open questions that have been put out by Cybelle Edmonds. We want to know who's controlling the documents and to what purpose. And if you want to follow us and follow this story, one way to do that is with a subscription to Prison Planet TV. Right now we have a Christmas special. You can get five months for free when you buy an annual subscription at Christmas time. It's a great way to follow this story as well as many others that we cover in a different way that you will hear in a media adventure that's being put together by a PayPal billionaire who is hostile to transparency, hostile to whistleblowers. That's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support, 100% organic coffee, infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and 
all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick, it has really good caffeine in it, it has a good clean wake up that lasts for a long time, doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth, it's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.